Welcome to the Organic Adventure Show. This is your host, Chila Rodriguez. And today I would like to show you an art project that you can do with your kids at home or just for yourself. And also I would like to talk about the, the art of parenthood that I have been thinking about lately. So we have been making sock puppets lately. You just use, this is an adult size sock, and you just put it on your hand. Use a few materials I will show you, and you can make, oh, the eyeball is missing. How weird is that? You can make the coolest puppets. Um, this one we used a glue gun for. This one I sewed it because I didn't have the right glue. So if you have a glue gun, that's the best way to do, to make the sock puppet. Otherwise, with the regular glue, as soon as your children are playing with it, the things will fall off. You always start with the mouth. This is a foam sheet, but you can use material too, the mouth. And you put it on the palm of your hand, so you will be able to open and close the mouth. This one was happened to be a blue, a green sock, so my child tried it on, and with this long nose, he decided he wanted to make a crocodile. So we just uh, used the glue gun to pl put the gemstones on it, the eyes and the nose, and he showed me where he wanted to put and what he wanted to put on, and I just put a that of glue there and then we glued the legs on. Now this one was the original one we have done months ago. This is Astro Poppy from a DVD. Astro Poppies they show at the end of the DVD how to make Astro Poppy. That's another sock. It's the same as this one. They actually just cut the top part, this part of the sock off and that's what they use. This is a sports sock. I think it's called athletic sock or something like that. They use that part to make the legs. So the same, you just put your put the sock on, you cut out, uh, this is felt, a little material for the mouth, and then I, as you can see I sewed it on, put the tongue on, I used pom-poms for the eyes, and then brown materials for the ears, <laughs> and the tail, and then you can use this part of the sock for the legs, and little pom-poms at the end of the feet, and here are the nose. So this is Astro Poppy. Now this week, Kyle made Scar from Lion King. Now this is a child size sock, so it's hard for me to put on, but it's great for my child. If it's too long, you just cut this part off as we did it. So he put the, he glued on the mouth and the green eyes, Scar has green eyes. Actually, Scar has a scar on his face, so he painted this sock. This was a white sock, and he wanted it to be uh, brown, but we didn't have a brown sock. He actually painted it and then put the mane, the black mane around uh, the lion with the legs. And then he wanted me to make a hyena from the Lion King. So this is my puppet. This is my hyena puppet. So. This is also white socks. We only had white or pink socks at home. So I used the white sock and painted it first with regular paint. Then put glued the mouth on. The pom-poms were Kai's ideas. He wanted to have the teeth with pom-poms. Teeth, two pom-poms for the eyes, and this furry material, black material for the legs and, and for some extra hair. So this is the hyena. You can make any kind of puppet at home. Very simple, very short little quick project and they, they look really cool. So that's a, that's a affordable way to make the characters from the stories and from the movies that you are watching and the kids love it. They can put it on and endless hours of play. So I recommend you to make the sock puppets, sock hand puppets. Kyle, I was showing them your puppets that we made this week. I will come and eat the tuna. Don't show daddy. What's that? We're showing daddy. I also want to talk about the art of life, the art of parenting. I have been observing myself and my children, my family a lot lately. And I came, I come back to the same thought of I need to create something, I need to express myself, how relaxing any kind of art is in my life, even if I'm just looking at an art or if I'm making something. So I started to think about creating and about the fact of art in our life and the importance of the art in our life. 
So at first I thought, oh, I have to start to paint or sew or read something beautiful, a poem or, or look at a picture. And I have been doing those and they really inspire me. These inspirations in my life help me in my parenting. And also, even if I just go visit a friend, uh, another mom with her children, just seeing another mom, her beauty, her house, her, her energy is very inspirational for me. So I call that an art too. Every kind of forms of arts that are inspirational in our life are very helpful in our parenting and in our living. But I also realized that the uh, form of art is just being in the moment, and I, that's a da. I know, it's, it's everybody knows it, and I knew that too, but for some reason, it took this long to really have this feeling of inspiration from being in the moment, to, to get the feeling of an artwork from doing that, from being in the moment. So it's very simple what I'm doing. I'm observing a lot myself and my children, my relationship with my family, and... Um, just to do the observation, just to to be conscious in the moment, um, to be in the moment, um, just to be conscious of what I'm doing actually. It's helping me to slow down, it's helping me to breathe deeper and um, sometimes this thought doesn't come easily, sometimes I, I really can't catch what I'm trying to do, but this saying it out loud that that this should be an art, a form of art of living. Everything should be an art. When I am making uh, recipes for a recipe book and taking pictures of the recipes, after I look at the pictures, I think, oh my gosh, that's what we ate, that's great. Or, or if I create something and document it and look at it and listen to it, then I feel like, wow, this is great. So almost like being aware of something or documenting something help us, helps us to uh, get in, inspired again and again. Again. So what I'm doing is I'm washing the dishes and I, I feel that I want to create some kind of artwork. And I can actually create an artwork just by being aware of how I'm washing the dishes. I slow down a little bit. I breathe a little deeper and, and love that second, that moment of washing the dishes and touching the dishes and turning them. I know it sounds silly. But uh, I try to apply this kind of philosophy to everything that I have been doing lately. And it helps me tremendously. It helps me in, in the playtime with my children. Or it helps me to, to appreciate life more. And to be more thankful. And to see the art and see what a, what a creator we are. Even if we create just the smallest thing. Clean dishes. And um, I think it's very important to get inspired and create something beautiful. And uh, that could be just to dry your hair or, or put something nice on that we like to wear or clean the face of our children after breakfast and show them in the mirror the difference. It's just, uh, just these little moments in life that if we live it fully, we turn it to a form of art or something like that. <laughs> I would love to hear your opinion, so soon we will have the comment uh, section. And I hope you will have a good week and you appreciate the little art I showed today, the puppets and my little speech about the art of living. Thank you so much for listening and see you next time. Bye.